Hey everyone, welcome to the College Lead YouTube channel where I cover how to prepare for and apply to college. Today is part two of the How to Edit Your Essay series. In the last video, I covered how to make sure your content or your essay answers the prompt. So be sure to check out part one if you haven't yet in the description. I'll link it there. Though I will be focusing this video on editing college essays, I also recommend using these tips for any other writing assignments you'll have throughout high school and throughout college. So be sure to watch this video from the very beginning to the very end. Today I'll be covering part two, but before we get into that, I want to share with you what inspired this series. The inspiration for this video series came from my Instagram account, actually. I posted in my story any YouTube video requests. I'm trying to figure out what to film next. And one of my followers suggested how to edit your essays, the basics. I loved this idea, and so here are the series. If you would like to get involved, definitely follow me on Instagram for tips and tricks on how to apply for college, as well as be a part of the videos that I make. I often ask for suggestions, I do fun Q&As through my stories, so be sure to check me out. It's just at college lead. Back to the main programming. So again, in the last video, we covered how to answer the prompt. You can check out that the video. You can check out the link to that video in the description below. Today we will cover how to be specific. So if you're worried that your essay is not unique or doesn't stand out, this video is just for you. With that, let's get started. So be specific, how to make your essay stand out. First of all, why do we want to be specific? Let's first understand our goal in this whole edit. So we want to be specific because it makes your essay engaging, unique, and stand out. You'll see why in the examples that I'll cover in this video. I like to think of being specific in three different levels. So the first level is not at all specific. The second level is somewhat specific. And the third level is very specific. So here's an example using apples in a grocery store. So level one uh, specific, which is not at all specific, uh, is that grocery stores have apples. Level two is grocery stores have green apples, red apples, and yellow apples. Level three is grocery stores have my favorite apple, the red Fuji apple, because it's sweet and crunchy. Notice that the level one detail applies to everyone. Everyone can say, yeah, my local grocery store has apples. On the other hand, not many people can share a level three detail and have it apply to everyone. Fuji apples are probably not everyone's favorite apple. What if you like Granny Smith's or green apples or a different kind? So, while level one statements are generally great for conclusions and occasionally introductions, they are not great for body paragraphs, which is the core of your essay. So if you stick with level one in your body paragraphs, you'll blend in with the rest of the applicants. To write a standout essay that's unique and memorable, provide level two and level three details wherever possible. So, obviously, with the apple example, duh, this makes sense, everyone knows it, but let's use a specific example inspired by an actual college essay prompt. So a question if you're applying to Yale that you'll have to answer is this. What is it about Yale that has led you to apply? The core of this prompt is essentially asking you why Yale? And in this answer, you want to be as specific as possible. A level one version of the why Yale question, and actually let me move my image so I don't block these beautiful Yale pictures. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay, so why Yale? Level one um, level statement could be Yale has high quality teaching staff. True, but a lot of other colleges have a high level quality teaching staff as well. Harvard, my alma mater, has a great teaching staff. UCLA, the school that my brother goes to, has a great teaching staff. UC Berkeley as well. Stanford, literally every college in the US will say that they have a high quality teaching staff. So how can we turn this response into something that is more specific and unique to you and also Yale? Let's try for level two. And to do that, let's start with the Google search because we first want to understand more details about Yale. So to write the level two statement, I started off by searching Yale majors. We want to understand what kind of majors they offer. Let's say um, that I'm interested in biology. So I want to see what kind of bio majors Yale offers. And um, 
Here, if we click on, if we just search Yale majors, the first result that comes up is majors in Yale. That looks like it. So if we click on this link, also I put it right in screenshots just to make it easier to, to share, but you can find all of this on Google. And then you'll land on this page, which is a list of majors in Yale College. So I scanned these majors and so to understand the kind of bio-related programs that Yale offers. And now I'm prepared to write my level two statement. So before we continue, try an exercise of writing what a level two statement would look like before you move on, before I move on to the next slide. So pause the video now and take a moment to write what you think a level two statement will look like. Okay, so I hope you have taken a moment to give it a try and let me show you what I came up with. There is no correct answer and it's just helpful for you to go through an actual exercise because listening to advice is very different from actually executing on a piece of advice. So a level two statement can look something like this. At Yale, I can explore cognitive science, ecology and evolutionary biology, molecular biology, and neuroscience. Now we're talking more specific. There may be other colleges that offer cognitive science and neuroscience, but maybe not molecular biology. Or maybe there's another college that offers ecology and evolutionary biology, but not molecular. Why am I always picking on molecular? Sorry, hang on. <laughs> Maybe there can be another school that offers molecular, but not everything else. So now we have gotten more specific. That being said, for a fact, I know that at Harvard, we have the equivalent of these kinds of sciences. So how can we make this statement even more specific to you and Yale? I also just want to show that level two demonstrates that you were interested in biology and that Yale offers biology opportunities. So that's where you can make the connection on why Yale. Whereas for statement one, it doesn't tell us anything about Yale or anything about you and your interests. So we're getting a little closer, but we can improve this even more. So let's go back to a Google search and see what other information we can find. So to write the level three statement, I did another Google search. Let's say that as a student, I'm interested in neuroscience in particular. So I do a Google search for Yale and neuroscience, and I come across this page as one of the results, a whole website dedicated to the neuroscience undergraduate major at Yale. And here you can read up on a ton of information from the course of study, faculty, research opportunities, summer funding, and calendar for fun events. So this is a really great way on how you can get started on doing research on a college on a list. On a college on your list. I cannot English today. <laughs> um, so let's say that we click faculty. Again, there are hundreds of ways to do this. I'm only providing this as an illustrative example. So we come to this page and we see that there are professors of all kinds of different, uh, I guess, studies or fields within neuroscience. Let's say that you scan the whole page and you come across one professor who looks very interesting and click on his profile. Let's say that for me as a student, using me as an example, I'm interested in computational neuroscience and I found a professor who actually studies and teaches computational neuroscience. We scan his quick bio and it says that he joined Yale faculty in 2015 where he directs a computational neuroscience lab with interest in leveraging computational modeling to understand psychiatric disorders in a framework for computational psychi psychiatry. So, great. Let's click on his website to learn more. And here is where we find more information. Now we have a whole website dedicated to Professor Murray's research and also his lab. There is a link to the people in the lab, the research that the lab is doing, the publications that they made, software, I'm guessing this might be software with any of the computational models that they came up with, other labs or organizations they might be collaborating with, news, links, positions, and more. And just by scanning this bio, we can get more details into what the lab studies. So here, in the last sentence in particular, they write that we leverage computational insights from models to advance the study of disorders such as schizophrenia in a framework for computational psychiatry. Psychiatry. I cannot English, I'm sorry. Psychiatry. <laughs> uh, I swear I graduated from college. Anyways, um, now that we know this, we are prepared to write a level three statement. So pause this video again and give it a try. 
Okay, welcome back. Now let me show you what I came up with, and again, there is no wrong or right answer. The only wrong answer is if you didn't get more specific than level 2. So this is the response that I came up with, and uh, let me move myself again. Oh, I'll have to block the campus picture. Level 3, here's an example. I want to explore the intersection of computer science and neurobiology. Professor John Murray, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name, studies computational models with schizophrenia. I would love to work in his lab to better understand how we can model neurodegenerative disorders. This is perfect. Now we have a statement that provides more information, not only about Yale as a college and research institution, but also about yourself, my interest in computational neuroscience, particularly in neurodegenerative disorders. Can you see how a level one statement can apply to a multitude of students, whereas level two and level three statements will apply to fewer and fewer students? Sometimes if you really get it right, a level three statement will only apply to you, and that's the goal that you're aiming for. This is how you can make your essay more engaging, more unique to you, and stand out among all the other essays. So in general, you want to strive for level two and level three sentences. So your next step is to reread your essay to identify areas where you can be more specific. If you ever catch a sentence that feels like it could be a level one and can be improved by transforming it to a level two or three, or if you find level two statements and want to bump that up to a level three, go for it. This will really make your essay strong and stand out. Don't worry about the word count yet because we'll cover that in the next video of this series, which is be concise. This is where I'll show you exactly how you can cut down your words in order to meet the word limit requirement for each essay. As I often tell a lot of my students, it's a lot easier to cut off words from an essay than to make something from nothing, which is to just write the content. So number one and number two, steps here, they both focus on content because you want to lay that solid foundation for your essay. Once you have all the um, messages and sentences that you want to share with your audience on paper, that's when you can take a step back and start refining and cutting down extraneous words and sentences. Um, and we'll talk about that in the next video. So stay tuned, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be one of the first to watch it when I post it, hopefully sometime next week. Thank you so much for watching.